Hi, welcome to WiseCat. Okay, today we've got a big one um, and there's going to be a lot of content we're going to be covering. We're going to be talking about open courseware and open resources. We're going to be talking about uh, vocabulary and lists and things like that. So specifically for English teachers, we've got a good one for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about glossary module and quiz module and quiz questions. We're going to be talking about a couple of extra plugins that can be can use glossary and or um, quiz question banks. And also we're going to be talking about a couple of additional plugins as well and some admin settings. So we've got a whole lot of things lined up in today's video. Um, so please uh, feel free to check the description below. In the description below, I will put a bunch of timestamps and links to specific um, sections if you're only interested in a specific section of the video. Anyway, let's get into it. So recently, what happened at the Moodle Association of Japan is that they built their own MoodleNet instance. Now, MoodleNet itself, um, there is actually a, a Moodle HQ run MoodleNet, the mothership, and the mothership is, uh, can also, you can also run your own instance of MoodleNet, and the Moodle Association of Japan is doing that. Um, so the MoodleNet, basically what it is, is a way for Moodlers to share Moodle contents online and open educational resources, links, or say quiz question banks or glossary entries, etc., etc. Uh, even whole courses online, you can share them and for other people, other Moodlers to just download and use. And so this is a pretty cool proje project of open courseware um, and educational resource sharing. Okay, so Moodle Sisters in Japan recently got those. So I'm going to shrink myself down a little bit. Yo! Um, yeah, I might also... Oops, that's the wrong one. I might also just move myself a little bit over the side so I'm not really in the way. Okay, um, so this is the uh, Madge MoodleNet. Mo uh, they call it MadgeNet, actually, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can see there are some uh, contents in here. And there's uh, full courses and things like that. There are also a couple of collections here. So the uh, Open Courseware Showcase is the precursor to Magnet. Uh, they've been doing Open Courseware for a long time now, Moodle Associates Japan has. Um, so they've been sharing stuff like that. And here are some of the courses that are also available on the Showcase. The Showcase is actually a Moodle site that actually does showcase it. Um, I don't know if it's going to continue much longer because now they've got the MagNet. Uh, but the showcase, you can actually log in and try the courses out before you actually, uh, you know, on MagNet here, you can download the courses, but you need your own Moodle to plug it into. Um, but anyway, yeah, these are some full courses. Uh, instructional design program, for example, and it's got a little send to Moodle button there. So if you click on that, it'll go, you know, be sent straight to whatever Moodle you want. Anyway, in these courses, in these um, collations, there's actually one here is the NGSL, New General Service List Project. Now, this is one that I've curated, and I've made a whole bunch of uh, resources based on the NGSL project, the New General Service List Project. Well, what's that? Well, let's have a look at that. So the New General Service List Project is actually, and here's the English teacher content coming in. Um, it's a list of... Uh, 2,800 or so words, the new general service list is, which are the most frequently used and most important words for understanding um, English text. So the most important words of English are the ones that are actually used the most, right? Uh, because, hey, if there are words that appear and you you know don't know them. I mean, aglet, let's say. I mean, that, that's actually a little piece of plastic on the end of your shoelace. A little bonus trivia there. Um, but that's a word that never comes up. So it's arguably quite useless to know that word. Uh, but the other words like, you know, um, I don't know, let's have a look at the list actually. If we go to the word list page, new general service list, they actually have a list of um, the words that are here, like best, better, etc., etc., etc. And these words are words that are covered. They, they provide something like 90% coverage of uh, all written English language usage. So if you've got that much in terms of, if you know that many words, if you know that much in terms of your vocabulary, then chances are when you're reading something, even if you don't know all the words, you're going to have 92% coverage is probably enough to actually, you'll get by. You'll, you'll be able to make sense of the words you don't know 
because of the words you do know. Anyway, um, I'm not terribly great at explaining this, but uh, I'll actually leave that to a link to this website and um, all the other websites I'm mentioning today. I will put links in the description below. I do encourage you, if you're a language teacher, please check out the new general service list site because there's a lot of good information on there. And also, if you get to see, say, um, Charlie Brown doing a presentation on it, because uh, this is uh, um, Brent Culligan, Charlie Brown, and uh, Phillips. I don't think I've ever met him. Um, but anyway, the uh, Charlie Brown I've met plenty of times, good friend of mine, and um, he does lots of presentations on him. He's a really good speaker as well, really worthwhile seeing if you get the opportunity. I mean, he's based in Japan, in Tokyo, but um, if you do get the opportunity to see him, I definitely recommend it. Uh, but anyway, the contents that I've made are based off of his lists here. So he's made the word list here. He's got a few here. The new general service list, which is actually just general English. Um, you know, 93% coverage of uh, general English, 92%, 93%, etc. Uh, there's also the academic word list for words used in um, academic contexts. The TOEIC service list, which is, you know, words that on top of the new general service list, if you have, if you know the words in the new general service list plus the TOEIC service list, then TOEIC is going to be easy from a vocabulary standpoint for you. There's a business service list, the fitness English, uh, new Dolch list, and NGSL spoken. So the ones that I've actually uh, looked at are new general service list, new academic word list, TOEIC service list, and the NGSL spoken in particular. And why I look at those is mainly because <clears throat> he's got these great lists here, which are like this one here is NGSL 1.2. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and download that. Uh, can I download it to RAM? Probably not. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Anyway, um, he's got NGSL 1.2 list with definitions in Eng easy English. Now this is great because if I can open that file. Let's see, will it work? Ah, here it is, yep. Um, so here's the file actually opened up and you've got the word and the definitions. And you've got say, abuse, to treat someone or something in a way that is cruel, harmful or wrong, right? So we've got a whole bunch of these um, words and their definitions in easy English. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. This is gonna be a great resource for students who are studying these vocabulary items. They'll be able to see the words in English and have an easy to understand, easy English um, definition written there. So it's like an English English dictionary. Well, that's great, but it's a word list at the moment. Let's Moodleize that. Let's Moodle it. Let's uh, make it make it make Moodle do the work for us. So what we want to do is we can add this to our Moodle course in terms of a glossary and quizzes and things like that. And that's what I've done. So, sorry to get to, that's the background information. Now let's get to the Moodle stuff. So if I show you on my Moodle here, this is my Moodle course, NGSL Activities. This course is actually shared in uh, here, the whole course, there it is, the Moodle course here, NGSL Activities course. I have found that some of the activities do not back up and restore so well, so your mileage may vary in terms of um, whether the whole course will um, work for you. But anyway, it's in there. And it, the content is this content that I'm about to show you. So if you want to see it. So what are, what's special about this course? <clears throat> well, this course in particular, I got a little welcome message here. And as you might see though, just about everything's linked. Well, how did that happen? That's magic. That's the magic of glossary auto linking. So if I click here, boom, course, route or direction that a river, etc., moves along. Ooh, what about this one, include? to make someone something part of a group. This is glossary auto linking. So this is the sort of thing that you can do if you have big long list and, and you have a glossary module. Module glossary auto linking is really awesome. Unfortunately, glossary auto linking is also disabled by default. Um, but when we get on to looking at my other Moodle, I will actually show you how to enable that. All right, but anyway, you can add the thing that Moodle makes easy is you can add the words to a glossary and then you get really good bang for your buck because you can actually have them glossary auto link and you can have other activities based off of the, um, the quiz questions and the glossary entries. So anyway, here is a glossary entry, a glossary here for the NGSL 1.2 here. Now in the settings, when you set this up and teacher can do this, you don't need to be admin to actually set this up. 
but the entries here you can actually choose here automatically link glossary entries and you definitely want that switched on um, to use the auto linking feature but otherwise the glossary itself is just a list of the words um, ah abandon ability ab able abortion about above abroad da, 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 da. if we look you know a couple of pages in uh, we're still in the A's let's go to say the P's yeah, uh, pair, paint, pale, paint, panel, and all of these are just words um, from the NGSL 1.2, right? Um, I've actually got a whole bunch of glossaries in here with the NGSL 1.2, the NGSL spoken, the NAOWL with English, and the TOEIC service list, etc., etc. Right? I've even got one in there because uh, the AWL also comes with Japanese definitions. So I've also got one in there where the Japanese definitions have also been added. Um, I, I teach Japanese students, so that's great to have that there um, as an option. Right? It doesn't mean you have to use it, but you can. Anyway, um, with these glossaries, what else can be done? I mean, having a word list is fine, but what else can be done? The best thing that I think that can be done is when you've got difficult texts and you wanna have some additional vocab support, you can do this auto linking thing. And this is done using filters and the filters have to be enabled at the site level. But as a teacher, you would come to say filters here and you'd say um, glossary auto linking. Now I recommend that uh, admins set this site wide to off but enabled so that you can actually enable it as a teacher at the course level or as I've done here I've actually got it off at the course level but for some um, for some areas where I actually want it like this uh, text here I've actually enabled the filter at that activity level so I'll show you how to do that you just come up here to the top right hand corner you edit the settings and when you come to the edit settings, there's this more thing. It's a little bit hidden, but in inside this more thing, there's the filters there, and you can turn the glossary auto linking on here. So, for example, if I turn this off now, the glossary auto linking will go away. So, look in there. See, no more words are linked. Woo, no words are linked. That's really sad. Well, this one's linked, but that's the web page. <laughs> so, uh, but the to turn that back on. Basically, you come in here, and if you've got the, the glossaries are set up, then just switching this glossary auto linking on, that just makes it link. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You go back to the course, boom, everything, all these words are linked now. There's project. What does project mean? Plan piece of work for a specific purpose. Yeah. All right. So this is quite useful for um, providing additional help for uh, students. So also the glossary, once you've got words in glossary, they're data, right? So once you've got these words, let's say you want to make additional quiz questions or something like that. Well, there are other things that you can do with it. You can uh, export them to a quiz. Uh, I'm just gonna move myself out of the way of that uh, block area because, haha. So now let's look over that side. And you see over here, we've got the um, uh, random glossary entry accelerate here. And this is referring to, to Inscreed, was it? So this is a random glossary entry. I've got, a, I've, I can choose, um, this is a block here. Uh, you can just add a block and you add the block uh, glossary entry or random glossary entry, there it is. You add that and then you choose which glossary you want it to add from. So for this one, or, or, mm, TOEIC service list, let's go. Okay, TOEIC service list and um, show concept heading, blah, 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 blah. Let's uh, do this, all the words. Okay, Whew. let's add that. Now I've added another block here and this one's from the TOEIC service list here, all right? So I've got a TOEIC word and I've got another word. You see, I can, I can even have multiple um, different ones here. Actually, I think this one's the TOEIC one. This is the um, academic word list one, all right? So replicate or pillow. And that'll, every time somebody reloads the course, I'm just gonna get rid of this second one. Uh, but every time somebody logs into the course, they'll get another word, it's like random entry. It's just like, hey, today's, you know, random word or something, random word for you You're looking at the site today. And then, you know, it's just showering them with a little bit of additional uh, glossary stuff. No extra effort required. You just set it up with the glossary once, set it, forget it, and you're done. So that is so easy. But another block here that I've got as well, and this is actually a third party plugin as well, but export glossary to quiz. Um, by doing this, this means that you can configure this and this, um, wait a minute, I'm actually going to make myself disappear for a second. Uh, be right back. 
<laughs> anyway, here you can actually choose which glossary you want. Let's say I want the NAWL with English. I want this to be turned into uh, by randomly. I want it to be turned into a matching question type. I want to have, say, five questions per uh, matching question. I can add one at wrong eggs for blah shovel with an answer. You got some options there. But basically, if I save those changes and now come back here, I can click on this link here, export 955 entries and create 191 questions. That's going to create 191 um, questions that are five item matching questions. And it's going to just create them for me. Yeah. So what does that actually look like? Well, uh, I'm glad you didn't really ask. But anyway, uh, I'm going to try to move my head across to the other side again. I'm going to go all the way over there. So I've actually done this before in here. And in the question bank here in this course, actually, I've already made one. So if we look in there, uh, let's look in the category. Uh, this is the matching questions. And I actually made... Um, uh, 10 question matching questions. But anyway, uh, you can see these. So these are all the questions here. And these questions here, if I just look at them, you know, like uh, preview, boom, look at that. That's a matching question. And a machine that flies through the air. Hmm, could be an airplane or something. Airplane, yeah. Uh, a statement that is accepted as true. Hmm, a fact or something. What am I looking for? What am I looking for? I don't speak English, do I? A uh, statement, maybe a comp, uh, an axiom. Oh, an axiom. Ooh, that is a good one. All right, anyway, um, these questions, this this actually can, um, you, you can preview them all, but they're ready to use in quizzes. And that's the next thing that you can do with um, questions is that you can make quizzes. And so I've got a bunch of quizzes here. But actually, before we get onto the quizzes, though, I'd also like to show that in here, it's not just glossary entries. I've actually also made the ultimate NGSL question bank and a few other question banks as well. Uh, beware of the ultimate one. The ultimate one is huge. So your Moodle, it might, it might not quite be set up to handle the, this question bank size. But don't worry, there are also, um, I've split them up so that there's a question bank for the NGSLS. This is the spoken NGSL um, list. And so each of them have their own, the NGSLS, the TOEIC service list question bank, the, the academic word list question bank, and they're all separated out as well. So if you, if you can't import the ultimate one, just import these ones separately and that should be okay. All right. So anyway, uh, going into... Uh, once you've got the questions imported, you can, of course, make quizzes and you can also, of course, make quizzes with the quiz questions in there. Um, just to look at the some of the other questions first, if we go to the question bank, so what I actually made was, if we look at the categories, and they're in categories as well. When, when you're making questions in your question bank, whether you use these ones or not, categorize your questions. Seriously, it, you'll you'll thank me for it later. Anyway, in here, we've got the um, NGSL uh, project uh, question bank. These are the ones that I've actually added. NGSL project, NGSL 1.2, three distractors, four distractors, five distractors. And each of them, you can see, is three distractors, four distractors, five distractors. What's that mean? Well, that means that these are multiple choice questions. And three distractors mean that there are three wrong answers. So there's one correct answer, three wrong answers. So it's A, B, C, D, multiple choice, um, and... Three distractors means that there are three wrong answers. Four distractors, four wrong answers. Five distractors, five wrong answers. So depending on how difficult you want to make your quiz, choose questions from one of these three banks. It just gives you a few extra options. They're actually the exact same word lists, right? Um, 2,809 questions in each um, bank here. But it gives you options. And the options will come important a little bit later. And I'll show you why. So the NGSL spoken, NAWL, and TSL are all in there. Now, what does this actually look like in a quiz? Well, what this means is that in a quiz, like this one here, where I've got you know demonstration questions from all of them, um, you can actually edit the questions and you can actually set random questions based on the filter condition. So you can add questions to this question bank 
And what that'll do is actually, it'll pull from those that question bank of 2,809 questions. It will pull a question at random, another question at random, a third question at random. So every time the student takes this quiz, they're going to get another three words that they've never encountered before. So you can set this quiz to be, um, well, I've set this one to interactive with multiple attempts as well. Um, so they can actually check it while they're doing it. Uh, but also, you can set this to multiple attempts and say the highest grade. So you can set a question bank, a, a, a quiz with say 10 random questions. And you say, okay, student, take this quiz as many times as you like, but your, your homework is to at least once get full marks on it. And by setting it with grading method highest grade, that automatically will complete and the grades will automatically go into the grade book. How cool is that? Students get great practice. You can track the track it and give them a grade for it. And once it's set, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It just does it for you. I love these things that you know reduce my workload. <laughs> you know, but anyway, um, especially when it's a good bang for your buck for the students' buck. Anyway, let's preview this quiz. Let's have a look at it. Let's check it out. Okay, so a student entering in here would see, you know, for example, this is the three distractors, NGSL 1.2, A to D. So here's a type of question. Being in the middle, ice, description, game, central. Central, I think that's the one, right? Check it. Okay, yes. And you can see when um, they check it, they get central, being in the middle. They get the, the word and its definition comes up as feedback as well. How about this one? All of space and everything in it. Uh, let's say maintain. Hmm, yeah, no? No? Oh no. Oh no. The correct answer is universe. So what, what does maintain mean then? Oh, to keep, exist, or continue without changing. Yeah, that is definitely not all of space and everything in it. So this question, these quizzes are providing feedback for the students as they actually do them. Right? Instantaneous feedback and not only just saying incorrect, but also saying, hey, this is what this word means. How cool is that? That is cool. I, sorry, if I may say so myself, this, this is cool. This is a good question bank because it also does provide all of the, the feedback. And when you go to four distractors, of course, A to E. So we've got A to E, very unpleasant, hmm, horrible. That sounds horrible, right? Is it? It is horrible, correct? Horrible, uh, very unpleasant. One or four parts equal of something. Okay. That would be a quarter. Yeah, I am good at English. To make a choice about something or choose after thinking. Weird. Um, oh, no, that is the wrong answer. Hmm, incorrect. Weird, it means odd or unusual. Yeah, I should know that one. Um, five distractors, A, B, C, D, E, F. Now we've got more, you know, so you can actually give the students, say at the early point point of the course, you give them, you know, four distract, uh, three distractors, so four options. A to D, and then later on, when they become more advanced or something, give them more words, throw them a bit extra of a challenge. Why not? So that's how these quizzes work, right? Now, the ones before that I, I pulled from uh, the um, the matching, the matching one from the NAWL, this one, actually, I'm going to, well, I should just start a new preview. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. This is the matching question types. This is, this is another quiz that actually uses those matching questions that we did. Now, these ones were the ones that were, the questions were automatically generated from the, uh, the glossary, right? So all I had was the glossary and I used that block in the right-hand side to make the, question, the quiz questions. I downloaded them, then I imported them into my question bank and boom, I have these um, concepts. So an in noun, a problem, a fault, what would that be? Hmm, a defect, yeah. Uh, having personal qualities that people admire. Hmm, yeah, let's see, what would I go with? Uh, probably noble, uh, mm, right? Uh, being with other people, hmm, socially, All right? It's an adverb, so that works. Not messy, clean and orderly, simple and uh, I, know, I kind of want to, okay, neat, that's neat. Um, but anyway, I can just do, you know, choose these other options as well without thinking about too much. But anyway, that's that one. There's another question type that that block allows and that's this one, the drag and drop one. 
right so we can have a look around here economic system play based on private ownership of money that sounds like capitalism to me <laughs> yeah um large printed notice or picture piece uh, picture a little bit poster right so you can drag and drop a few things like this in here and then students can just complete the quizzes by dragging and dropping I'm not a big fan of drag and drop simply because accessibility wise some people find it difficult to do the drag and dropping one so I actually prefer the matching ones also the matching question types um, are a little bit more accessible because you can actually uh, use the keyboard to change your answers and things like that and you can tab and go through each item using the keyboard alone don't have to use the mouse so I actually think that this is a bit better in terms of accessibility all right but then you know students can finish the attempt um, they submit all and finish it will give them the feedback right it'll give them feedback about what the the different words mean um, you know yes or no or something like that it gives them all the feedback you want to give them you can choose how much feedback when you set up the quiz right you can choose how much feedback to provide or not if you're going to give them the question correct answers or not um but this is automatically graded right it's given me a grade five out of 20. i did really well on this one 25 percent all i have to do is take it a few more times and get the 100 percent. but the next time i do it remember these words right halfway noble socially neat industrialization well, if I start a new preview, I got new words, right? They're not going to be the same words because it's random and there's something like 95 questions in there, right? 95 sets of 10 questions. So that's the power of it, is that students are not going to get tired of these same old words all the time. They're always getting something fresh. So that's the great thing about um, using this, uh, these lists to generate these question banks. Okay, so that is uh, the glory that is glossaries, glossary auto linking, and quizzes. Now, this stuff, the glossaries, the glossary auto linking, and the qu quizzes are um, Moodle default. They're, they're installed in every Moodle by default, they exist. You have a Moodle, it's in your Moodle, the, the ability to do these things. The auto linking might not be switched on, but um, if you ask your administrator kind of nicely, he might, you know, allow you to have this um, enabled. But let's get into some plugins, some third-party plugins that you can't actually use without installing them. And that's where the games come through. And this is cool. This is very, very cool stuff. So, first one is Quiz Venture. And, oh, this one's cool. You're going to like this. All right, so... Quiz Venture is basically a Space Invaders type game where the definition is going to appear on the top and the, well, yeah, I'll just show you. All right. So here we come. Space. Here it goes. Press space to oh, click. To, press space. It's like Space Invaders and, and we're pressing space. How, how appropriate. All right. Let's turn some sound on as well. Um, wait a minute. Can you hear that sound? All right. Let's try that. Well, I think you can hear that sound, right? Yeah. Several consisting of many different types of things. Okay, uh, very. Ah, uh, it's all the way down there. Oh, I died. Uh, straight away. To make someone afraid or nervous, uh, frightened. There we go. Uh, information about recent events. Okay. To understand or sympathize with someone or something, uh, relate. relate. To talk to someone using a telephone. Well, you just a phone call. Okay, end of something. Completion. Uh, the finish. Uh, being the way things occur. Okay, so you might set this up. You might actually require the students get a particular score. And you say, okay, please continue doing this until uh, you get a score. And then using, so you can see this one's using four. Um, there are four. There's one correct answer and three distractors, right? Remember that before, um, when I said the, the question bank has three distractors, well, this is where the four distractors and five distractors might come in, right? Because to need, okay, to depend. But you might say, okay, but only four, only four, three other incorrect options and spaceships? That's not really a challenge. I mean, seriously, once the students have done this challenge and completed that, got their you know score of 10,000 or more, you want to give them a real challenge, right? 
let's go up to level two. And level two is the exact same game, but because um, I have, you know, uh, in here, I've got four distractors. So you can see achievement, force, range, house, fit. There are five ships on there, right? And in theory, you could keep going with this, right? Um, I just missed that question completely. Thing that is not yet known or named. Okay, no, something. <laughs> okay. Uh, part of a country, um, the world, the area, or something like that. I'm gonna... Uh, oh, region. Okay, 60 minutes, and blah, blah, blah. Sorry, this is addicting. I'm, I'm addictive. But anyway, after they've done five ships, they can go on to level three. Which is, boom, boom, boom. Now we've got five incorrect answers and one is correct. Uh, in or toward the north, uh, northern. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, in moving or happening without speed or fast. Okay. Oh, sorry. I want to get that sound. <laughs> a person who sings as often as a professor. Uh, let's see. A singer. And there it is in a hidden here it can get if there are many more ships on the screen. So that's one thing that you can do. Right? How cool is that? That I just you know, turned it into a game. Okay? So a student who um, imagine from a student's perspective, you you've got you know ten minutes before class starts. Eh, my, I got my computer here, I'm ready to go. I, I, I might just uh, you know play a bit of uh, Space Invaders and study some English at the same time. Teacher comes in. What are you doing? I'm studying, sir. Right? That's totally cool. Okay. So that's the Quiz Venture mod. Um, by the way, the, this one is here. Quiz Venture. It's in the plugins database. Uh, it's there. You just download it and you install it. But you do have to install it. Okay. The next one actually is going to come from the game module here. Um, well, actually, wait a minute. Quiz Venture. Forgot. I, I should show you just how easy it is to set this up. Right? So let's... Tell you what, let's do one right now. All right, so let's say I switch my editing mode on. I would hit add an activity or resource. I would come in here. Once I've got Quiz Venture in, installed, I just add Quiz Venture. I say um, uh, demo spacey stuff. Right? Demo space stuff, whatever. I'm not really good at naming stuff, perhaps. Uh, anyway. In here, uh, I've got the quiz venture name, is that? And here, you see, I've got one option in here, really. Question category. Default for NGSL activities. Um, I can just choose which category I want. So let's say I want um, TOEIC service list with five distractors. Let's go hard, right? Let's go hard or go home. TOEIC service list, five distractors. I select my question category. And now out of 1,246 1, questions, it's just going to create at, you know, that, that's it. It's just going to create questions. It's going to take questions from that and straight away. Boom. There we are. All right. So now I've got the state of working properly or as accepted. This is pulling directly from that question bank of 1,200 students are not going to get sick of this, right? Um, the only reason they would get sick of it is if it's too hard, if it's not at their level, right? But you just pick the, and that's why, that's the beautiful beauty of having multiple lists, right? NGSL is about the right level for everybody. Um, the TOEIC service list, a bit more of a challenge, but, you know, if they're studying for the TOEIC, I can think of better, I, I can think of far worse ways to study for the TOEIC test, right? Than playing games like this. All right, the other one is the game module. Game module here is another third-party plugin, but this also can be integrated with question banks and glossaries and stuff, right? So let's have a look at those. All right, so in here, we've got the NAWL crossword, right? So well, let's see, I've, I've already been playing, demoing it a bit separately. But anyway, uh, let's continue a previous example. All right, so this is basically it. It will jet from a glossary, um, it will, I think this one works on a glossary, right? Let me check it out. Uh, settings, yeah. Uh, source of questions is a glossary or questions or a quiz. So you can go quiz, question bank or quiz or glossary. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
but I've chosen glossary. Glossary is probably the simplest. Um, you just choose which glossary you want. Where in in GSL it should be N A W L. I think this one. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, this is if you're using a quiz, etc. Uh, etc. Et you can go crossword options. So the options: how many rows, how many words, etc. You know, um, and maximum compute time in seconds. I've got that set to five at the moment. It doesn't need to be that high. I might, might put that down to three. Okay, save and display. Let's save and display it. Let's continue the previous attempt. You know what? Let's make a new one. Let's end this crossword game. It's over. All right. Now, let's get a new game happening. New game. New crossword. Completely new crossword generated at random from that question bank. Three seconds and boom. There it is. And this is generated from those glossaries in here. Now, this is one of those items where actually... Having the um, the auto link <laughs> glossary auto linking with all of the questions down here, it's going to make this really messy. So you probably don't want that filter on glossary auto link filter on in here, but I don't have it switched on, so it's nice and clean. Look at this. Pick on a word. So let's pick this first word. Not affected by something. Oh no, unaffected. How that go? No, the word can correct word contains nine letters oh it's an adjective unaffected mm, not sure okay let's try another one this one's a four letter word great i'm good at those um a medicine or treatment that makes an ill person become healthy that would be a cure would it not all right and now we've got cure in there and now uh adjective easy to do or understand not complicated and the third letter's an r right you can see how you can go through these question crosswords and getting the, the different words and things like that, it's sort of self-checking. But you can also check the crossword to see if you got uh, any letters right. Now this is saying found five correct characters. I, five, really? I, I think there's only four, but anyway. Um, you can actually see that it's um, giving the, the crossword is, is right there with the correct answers. You can end the crossword game. Students can be graded on this and have the grade go straight to their um, their uh, um, grade book and also of course if they uh, decide hey I, I, I want to have another go at it then they can reattempt the game um, and as soon as they reattempt the game now they've got another crossword there right they got a new one right there that's a new one yeah what's this one amount of medicine to be taken at any time one time that would be a dose yeah what about this one second letter is O Ability to understand, um, comprehension. Yeah, that works totally. All right. So you can see crosswords. You can use the question bank or the glossaries to actually make crosswords automatically. Um, students can study all of the activities, all the stuff. What about the TSL TOEIC service list cryptex, right? Same sort of way to make it. And so if we continue, so for example, this one is like find a word, right? But find a word, not only find a word, but also choose which definition it goes with. So let's say, let's see, what can I find in here? Hmm. Let's see. Um, I'm looking for a word. I can see scope, right? I see scope, scope. So what's the definition for scope? Uh, Scope, scope, something, look, something for a looking at, right? Oh, maybe that's just random. Okay, well, if it does not cost anything, it is free. Uh, the act of understanding, I don't know. Uh, the act of understanding. So you can see you're, you're, you've got the hints here to do with the management of an office. <sighs> can you see the word? <laughs> You, you guys are probably better at this than I am, and you're just like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Specification is in there. Specification, big, long one, vertically. Specification. Uh, nope, nope. Uh, document that shows who a person is. Uh, that'd be, you know, identification. Uh, a special detail or necessity for something. That would be a specific vacation boom and it's there it's there yeah got it right now of course all of these as well they can be printed 
You want to print it? <laughs> you want to print it out. Woo hoo hoo. Print it out and let them do it in class. Why not? You know, you have options. That's the point. This this whole thing is it's give it's giving you options, right? And it's making things so, you know, you yeah, this is cool. How much effort was it? None, right? It didn't didn't take any effort. Um also, you know the game uh the quiz show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something? All right, so this is this is another one that's a bit weird, but anyway. I think this one's usually used uh, for pictures, if you've got some pictures or something like that, or a longer description. But anyway, a connection between two or more people or things. Hmm, two or more people or things. That would be a relationship. Pew. Okay, and now I'm going up to 200, right? All right, so <laughs> the goal is to try and get all the way up to the top, right? A story or a report about something. Hmm, I'm not sure about this one. Can I go 50-50? And now I've used my 50-50, and there are two left. Okay, let's go with an account. Woohoo! Yeah, I got it right. For what reason or purpose? I would like to phone a friend. <laughs> and it says, I think the correct answer is why. For what reason or purpose? I think they're... Okay, I'm going to go with why. Yes, that was correct. Thank you. I'm glad I phoned a friend. Or what does the audience think? <laughs> Pull the audience, and it'll tell you, you know, A, B, C, or D. It sort of mimics the idea, right? Now, I don't know, is C the right answer? This day, this present day, at the present time, C, weekend. Hmm, no, 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 I think it's D. So this is not, you know, it's like the game. It's not entirely the, they're not entirely smart. Oh, sorry, the, oh, um, hmm, wait a minute. Let me see, can I go back? Yeah, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm in the way, aren't I? Yeah, there it is. Ha, ha, see, uh, that question's over there, and the, People said this over here, right? Over on the, the right-hand side over here. And so, <laughs> so you can see, they said, you know, 59% said it was weekend, but it's actually today. Yeah, okay, so we're going on. So anyway, this is the uh, millionaire question. Okay, so there's millionaire there, and there's one more question I'd like to show you, and that is snakes and ladders. Snakes and ladders is probably another, a slightly sillier one. Uh, but the idea is, you know, if you translate the word right, you will proceed the number of the die. All right, so you can see here, I'm on number seven as well. Uh, eight, nine, ten. To get to ten, which is three dots away, all right, I need to get this uh, question answered properly. So, the study of form and structure. All right, key north. Mm, I don't know. Um, study of form and structure. Let's say, I don't know, art, why not? <laughs> Whatever, probably wasn't right. Wasn't right. Uh, packed together, closely united, small. Uh, packed together, it's an adjective. And I only get one for this one, so. Hmm. Compact? Uh, could be. Did I move? Yes, I moved. All right. Thin covering of tissue. Hmm. That's like. A membrane and I have to spell it correctly as well if I if I make a spelling mistake it won't work and woohoo I'm getting I'm good at this spirit of dead person appearing to the living you day okay that'll be a ghost ghostbusters right so you can see that um, this will come you can go oh I've got a six a six came out this one's worth six uh, place one is a destination Destination. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Right, uh, let's see. Six. Right, now, of course, if you land on a square with a ladder, it'll take you up the ladder. If you land on the square with the head of the snake, it will whoosh, take you down. Right, it will take you down. Now, I don't know what happens if you land on, say, this head here and go in there. That seems a little dangerous. Right. One, two, three. Oh, this one will land me on it. So I would want to actually get this one wrong. <laughs> but let's uh, let's see. Very small blood vessels. Mmm. Uh, um, capillaries. Maybe capillary. Let's see, did that work? Ah, oh, that worked there. Got me there. I'm not sure. Actually, I think this one. Yeah. 
So now if I get this one wrong, so I'll just put in something there, and that sends me down the snake, I believe. Yeah, Ugh. man, that hurt. I didn't, fortunately I didn't go in the hole. Anyway, uh, that snake and ladders for it. So you can see that these games, they turn things into a lot more fun, right? So, and these games are built really easily just by selecting which, um, so the millionaire game, boom, you just come into settings and it says, you know, questions. I'm just choosing this one from questions. Questions should be NGSL spoken 1.2 with three distractors. Cause I want four options in the game. If I wanted five distractors, I could easily change that out for another one. Right? So once you've got the question banks, they're so easy to make all kinds of different activities that your students can use to, well, just study English and quiz themselves or to study in a bit more of a fun kind of a way, right? And so this is really, really cool stuff. Okay, so we've covered, you know, um, what these things are and why these, uh, why these contents are useful. Now let's look at actually how to use these quizzes. So how to actually grab these questions, for example, and how to import them into your Moodle. Right, so, sorry, I grab a glass of water. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare my download folder there, yeah, but I'm gonna prepare it off screen because I've got some other downloads in, in there. I do not want to show you my browser history, sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> in here, I've got the question banks and things like that. Let's go to a brand spanking new Moodle right here. And let's do some of this. So I've got a brand spanking new Moodle. I don't even have a course in here yet. So let's make a course. Uh, I'm gonna call this NGSL. And uh, in here, NGSL. And now I've got my course, all right? Um, I'm gonna actually set the start date to a few days back and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, fine, let's go. Same display, now I've got a course, great. And because it's a new Moodle, the tour is coming up. Yeah, skip tour, go away. All right. So now the first thing I want in here is for example to, and this is a brand spanking new, there are no plugins installed at the moment, all right? No plugins at all. This is just, you know, vanilla Moodle. That's why it looks so vanilla. <laughs> There's not even any, um, any theming being done on it. Uh, yeah, anyway, in here, let's say, first thing I wanna do is turn editing on as teacher and I wanna create a glossary. And I'm going to make a glossary. I'm going to say that this glossary, let's say I'm dealing with academic students or something. So I want the NGSL one. Uh, I want the NAWL one. So I'm going to go NAWL glossary. Now you can call your glossary whatever you want. Um, but I like to call mine NAWL glossary. Now here's another thing that I really do like to do. And this is actually an important point. Licensing. So the national, national, a new general service list project is licensed to be used creative common commons by attribution and share alike, which is kind of why I'm sharing my derivative works with uh, the world as well. But the by part is important, right? So um, you'll notice in here for all of these ones, so I want to get the glossary entries for NAWL, right? So I get them with the Japanese, okay. So this one here. But I also want to cite who um, it came from. So I'm gonna grab this bit here, all right? This part here, this is the citation here, right? Now, um, if you're gonna use this content, you should absolutely do this. You copy that and you paste that into the description of the glossary, all right? And you can add, say, you know, um, glossary entries. I mean, you could even just, uh, sorry, you can even just the whole thing, right? Actually, grab just grab the whole thing, and remove the parts that you don't need. Because, for example, the file is in blah 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 blah. Import into your own glossary activity. The file is in. You probably don't know, need that part. But please, don't use this without um, citing. Um, Brown, Culligan, and Phillips, okay? They've worked really hard on it. They're providing it for us. Um, they provided it, they shared it with the community for free. They absolutely deserve to be credited. So please make sure that you include the credit in there. 
All right, so now I've got my um, glossary stuff like that, and I'm going to save and display. Pew. All right, there's my glossary. It is set up. Now, unfortunately, actually, sorry, I should go back here. Entries, I do want to make sure that the automatic link glossary entries is selected to yes. Okay, and yes, that is. All right, so if I stay, save and display, boom, here it is, and nothing's auto-linked. Well, that the site is, but nothing else, and there are no entries. What? That's what we've got to actually grab. So over here, we're going to grab it. Now, on these ones, on the glossaries, send a Moodle, doesn't work. Tried it, didn't work. What you do want to do is download the file. And downloading the file is fine. You download the file. Okay, I'm going to download that file. Boom. And now I have saved the file. There's the file. Yeah. And so, and the lint, and the also the uh, the Excel file we downloaded before. Um, so anyway, let's go back to our glossary here. And now over here on the right hand side, eh, got a duck. Yeah, import entries. Woohoo! Import those entries, and we just drag and drop that file that we just downloaded. We just drag and drop him into here to import those entries. Right, uh, man, yeah, that's right. This browser doesn't have permission to see that folder. Okay, just a sec. I'm gonna move it into another folder and let's try that now. Pew. Okay, so now that's uh, uploading. Um, I'm gonna refresh this once. Yeah, 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 yeah. Import entries. Let's try this uh, again. Now that the file's actually somewhere that the, now that, that upload completed, Current glossary, all right, we're gonna import them to the current glossary and we're gonna submit. And in go 958, 958 glossary entries. Woohoo, yeah, let's continue. And there we have them. There are all these words from the NAWL. You know, you could do this as well um, with the other glossaries. There's no reason why you can't have two or three of these word lists in the same glossary. Um, except it might get a little bit jumbled up. I mean, and you can have as many glossaries in a course as you like. So you don't have to have anything uh, in there. So let's take this this word, or let's take acceleration. Yeah, acceleration. And if we look at the word acceleration, we put it in the course. So we've selected auto linking, right? <clears throat> so if we go text and media area, pew, and just say, um, yeah, the text should be acceleration. Uh, let's say test words all right test word whatever all right and um in here i'm going to save and return to course, of course on that one and there's acceleration it's not auto linked what gives well what gives is remember that in a brand new moodle glossary auto linking unfortunately is not enabled by default and can't go to the filters and it's not here by default all right, so this is default, this is stock Moodle. If I want that glossary auto linking to actually happen, I have to go to site administration. I have to be an administrator for this part. Um, I've got to go to plugins. I go to filters. I manage filters. And I really wish this weren't disabled by default, but that's what it is. What I really wish is that this would be off but available. And off but available is usually where you want it because you want to be able to choose which items you have the um, uh, you have the the linking actually happen in because you don't want it happening in everything uh, trust me especially if you're giving them uh, imagine giving one of those quizzes you give one of those quizzes and it says what's this word but if they click on the word they get the definition straight away uh, it's just giving them the answer that's it's not actually a quiz or anything it takes the meaning out of it so anyway um, off but available that means that um, it's off by default and it is off by default here but now the teacher can go to the course filters page and turn it on All right and if the course uh, teacher does that now they go back and now it's auto linked an increase in the rate or in the speed or rate of something kasoku yeah absolutely All right so that was pretty easy um, the glossary itself, just being a, a word list or something like that, where they can look up words, why not? Just add that. That's that's a cool um, thing to add, right? Just remember when you're doing this, please make sure that you add a citation there. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Uh, let's go for another resource. Another resource might be, 
Uh, let's see the question bank. So, yeah, why not? Let's go with the ultimate. The ultimate NGSL question bank. The ultimate. Right, now this one I think send to Moodle might actually work, but I'm gonna, just going to download the file anyway, because why not? Yeah, I'll download the file, and uh, now I've got it. My ultimate NGSL QBank. Woohoo! God, that's a great name. Okay, so here we go back. Oh, no, nope, wrong Moodle. There we go. This is our, our Moodle here. And now it's a question bank, so we want to go to the question bank, right? So under the More tab, here's question bank. Right, you go to question bank here, and then uh, inside of here, there is this drop down here for questions. We want to change that to ex uh, import. Right, import. Now, these questions, as it says back here, are in Moodle XML format. The file is in Moodle XML format. All right, so that's telling you what file this is. Okay. Um, it also says, be warned, this file is not for the faint of heart, nor the server without at least two gigabytes of extra PHP memory limit. Actually, I better do that myself. Um, that's why, you know, it requires a lot of memory to actually do this, which is why you actually might want to uh, go site administration. Right. Uh, again, if you're, if you're not an admin, that's fine. Just use one of the smaller question banks, not the ultimate one. The ultimate one's got everything. Um, but anyway. A server. Wait, where is this thing again? Server. It's not server environment. Hmm. Wait, I did actually write it down over here. Uh, go to cited server performance. Performance. That's where I want to go. Okay. Server performance. In here. Extra PHP memory limit. I'm going to give it two gigabytes, right? So that's the recommendation on that I wrote earlier for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway. Uh, by the way, if your server doesn't have 2,002 gigabytes of RAM available, um, swap is okay as well. But if it doesn't have enough RAM, don't do this. <laughs> you'll break your Moodle. Uh, you'll break your server. Um, or, well, actually, what but usually will happen is that the server will reach too much memory and it will start killing processes off. And some of the first ones to be killed off are PHP and MySQL, so mm, you don't want those to be switched off. Anyway, um, once you've got that saved, which I now have, I'm going to continue on with this. Uh, Moodle XML format. In general, you can get the category from file and get the context from file. I would leave both of these checked because the categories, I did actually put the questions into nice categories. And we drag and drop our file into here. And this will take a few seconds to actually run. But this will import all of those follow-up folders, um, all of those uh, questions into different uh, categories into the question bank. And look at this, look at it go, and whoa, there are 17,202 uh, questions in this one file. And that's why it takes a bit of RAM. Um, because each of these questions, remember also, it's not just the question, but the A, B, C, D, and uh, also each uh, item has the feedback, as feedback, what the word means and um, what the definition for even the wrong answers are. So anyway, there's a lot of data in here that's being added. And as we scroll down, okay, now I'm up to 5,000, so I'm about a third through. Um, tell you what, I might pause the recording until it is complete. Okay, so it looks like it's completed. Uh, the wheel has stopped turning. And so now if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I should see a nice little friendly continue button. 8,000. And this is how many questions there are. <laughs> it's a ridiculous number of questions. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to grab this toolbar. Here we go. All the way down the bottom, and 17202, and area of space used for a particular reason. Yeah, great. And I've got my continue button. Uh, sorry. Uh, continue button. Continue. All right, the continue button basically indicates that the job completed, which means that all of the questions actually went in. If it stops halfway through and you don't see the continue button, probably is a good indication that your server ran out of memory um, or something went wrong and, and PHP just couldn't complete. Um, so anyway, 
the ultimate, as I said, yeah, in order to get the ultimate, you have to have this all happening. Good. So this is already selected the three distractors list here. So this is the three distractors uh, question bank. If we look at categories over here, we'll see, yep, sorted into nice categories. The NAWL ones, there's three distractors, four distractors, five distractors, NGSL spoken, uh, three, four, and five, NGSL 1.2, 345 and TOEIC service list 345. Right, and now if I wanted to make a quiz out of these questions, um, then I can easily make one just by adding it here. Turn editing on. Right, this is how you actually use this question bank now that you've got it. Add an activity or resource. Uh, let's say, you know, a uh, quick, quick TOEIC vocab quiz. And let's give it a quick TOEIC vocab quiz. So here's how you'd set it up. Uh, give it some timing. Let's say, I would say, you know, add, say, uh, a time limit, say five minutes, right? Because I just want to give them a five minute quiz. Uh, let's give them a grade, unli uh, unlimited attempts in the highest grade. That's a great set of settings for if you want it to um, actually be used as an educational tool. Uh, layout, a uh, new page, every question, no, let's go every 10 questions. So we have all the questions on one page. Uh, question behavior, deferred feedback, that's where it, it, students will choose every single answer and then they submit and they get the feedback after they've finished the quiz. Um, that's good, but interactive with multiple tries is also good. This means that they can check it and they can try it a second time or, uh, or something if they want. There are some different modes in there. I'm gonna go with interactive multiple tries. It's kind of a nice one. Also, Marcus Green likes that one. If you're watching, thanks. Uh, <laughs> if, if so, see you in uh, Nagasaki in another couple of weeks. Okay, uh, allow redo within an attempt or something. They could try another question or a similar question type. Sure, let's do that, why not? Um, because we're gonna be using random questions anyway. Review options, during the test, we want them to be able to see all the feedback and everything like that. Sure, they can't see overall feedback because it's during the attempt, but give them all the feedback, uh, even the right answer, everything. Yeah, why not, you know. And extra restrictions on attempts, no, don't need any of those. And that's the quiz saved. But now we have to add the questions, right? Because we didn't choose the questions when you set up a quiz, you, you add the questions after you've built the quiz, right? So the quiz is there. We got 10 marks as the maximum grade. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm in the way again. Whoa, no, uh, come on. All right, move me over here. I'm just gonna shrink all the way down there. All right, so um, over here with the uh, add button, we're gonna add a random question. Now this is the key point. You wanna use a random question and you wanna select your category. So let's say just this one, I wanna do the NGSL spoken, 721 questions, three distractors, so A, B, C, D. I just want them to do, I, I know, that's right, we said we were going TOEIC, didn't we? Okay, let's go with TOEIC. Uh, TSL, uh, TSL three distractors, right? So A, B, C, D, and TOEIC service list, 10 questions. Uh, let's apply those filters, and these are the types of questions we're gonna get. You can preview them by clicking on the preview button here. And that opened up a new window way over yonder, All right? So we can do that. And you can see here, very old item, usually furniture journey, mm, antique or something, check that. Yep, that went really well. Okay, could start again. And because it's a random question, actually it will be different every time, but this one's just, you know, it's a preview. So um, we're, we're gonna do this randomly. Random question, number of questions, how many do I want? Uh, let's say I'm going to add, say, five from this one. And you're like, wait, didn't you say 10? Yeah, I did, but I didn't say that we're all going to have um, four answers. And so let's add a few more. Let's add a few curveballs as well, right? So let's add, say, five more, but this time we'll give them, make it a little bit harder and go with four distractors. Yeah, so the first five are going to be easier than the second five, which are going to be a little bit harder. All right, so that's set up. Now, let's go back to the quiz and let's check it out. Let's preview it. Five minutes for this. Oh dear, what have I done? I uh, didn't choose. It looks like some of these questions, I did not actually choose the right 
See questions. That one has questions. What about below? Yeah, I didn't click on a, um, apply filters, did I? Yeah. It, that's one of the things I, I'm really... Um, this new interface, I'm not a big fan of the fact that it doesn't actually say um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's, it's a little easier to mess up, I've found. Um, I found myself messing this up a lot. Anyway, the reason that happened, okay, good, good teaching moment. Uh, the reason that happened is because when I did the add from question bank thing, I don't think I chose to apply it properly. So if I go to four distractors, I need to click on apply filters first, and then I can add um, questions. Uh, question bank, it's not, I hit the wrong mouse button. I want random questions. All right. You got to click on, say, your four distractors, and then you have to click on apply filters. If you don't click on apply filters, it won't apply the filters. All right, come on. What is wrong? Yeah. Mm, come on. Okay, look, refresh. Resend, yeah. Okay, great. Let's try this again. Random question. Got to choose your, choose your category. Four distractors, great. Apply filters. Now I've got these bunch of questions coming up. Now I choose that I want five questions from there and I add those random questions. And now that should be right. Okay, now let's go back here to quiz. Okay, start attempt, boom. And now I've got my questions here and it's set up. Delivery of goods. Okay, so you can see here is the, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the linking that's happening. All right, so you might not want the linking to actually happen during a, a quiz. But anyway, delivery of goods carried by a large vehicle. Hmm, that would be a shipment. Boom, correct. And there's my feedback as well, right? If I get it wrong, all right, so let's choose elegant for that one. And it will actually tell me, incorrect, elegant, fine, or beautiful. But too many people in too small a space or something. And now I've got the option, because of the way I set the quiz up, try another question like this one. I hit that. Boom. Now I've got another question. The part of computer that you type on. Well, that's a keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that worked. Uh, let's go this one. And by the way, you do have to wait for the feedback to actually come in. And I keep on scrolling before I, I've hit it. Medicine in the form of uh, a capsule that you swallow. That's a pill. Okay. And that's got me back down there. Liquid found in pens, ink. Okay. Okay, that's ink. Uh, written reminder to do something. A memo. Okay. Um, every so often. And now we're in the five questions that are A, B, C, D, E. So now we've got the easy ones are for A, B, C, D. And the difficult ones are A, B, C, D, E. All right. So this is how this works. And the best part about it is, let's say a quick TOEIC vocab quiz. Let's say, all right, I want to give them one of these every week for the next four weeks, let's say. Well, setting up this was a lot of trouble, wasn't it? Well, you know what the best part is? You come over here, you duplicate that. You just duplicate it. Just one more. And then there were two. Well, in a few seconds. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, I actually have found this, that when you actually get, get when you've got um, questions from multiple question banks, duplication does take a while. And I'm not 100% sure why, but it does seem to be it's doing some sort of a query or something that takes a while. Hmm. You know what? Well, that's doing that. I'm going to grab me and move me over here. I like I like being on this side. Okay, come on. Duplicate. Taking a little while. This actually is fairly normal, unfortunately, because when you have these big, large question banks, for some reason, yeah, it takes a while. I'm going to just pause this and I'll unpause when it when it finishes so you don't have to just wait with me.
Okay, on my little Moodle here, that took about another 10 or 15 seconds. It took quite quite a long time, actually. Um, but anyway, the thing is that, you know, okay, if, you, if you're if you bothered by that, no, no, go get yourself a candy bar or something. Uh, but now, um, I can give that a name, and I can actually change this copy to, say, week two. Right? And I can drag this down into the next topic area or something like that, another part of the course, and boom. I've got my first week homework and my second week homework are set up. If I'm teaching a TOEIC course, boom, I've just made two weeks worth of um, homework. And you know what? Hey, what about next week? <laughs> Duplicate again. And then, you know, it's going to take 30 seconds or so. But then I've made all of my homework and I can just keep on, you know, I can just keep on keeping on. Because that second week or that third week is going to be there and the students will have a randomly uh, generated quiz each week. And with that number of questions, they're not going to get the same questions again. Well, actually, the, the Moodle question bank is a little bit peculiar in that it's not entirely random. First, Moodle will actually preferentially try to make sure that the students encounter questions that they've never encountered before. And it's only after the student has taken all of the question, quiz questions available that they'll start repeating them. And then it becomes truly random. But until then, it's actually trying to give them even better practice than we could imagine. All right. Wow, this duplicate thing does take a long time. I am, I am quite surprised at just how long it does take. Okay, I'm gonna pause it one more time and I'll let it finish. Okay, again, took another 15 seconds or so. But let's have a look at this. This one's the copy of the copy. All right, so the copy of the copy. And let's preview that quiz. Let's see. Let's make sure. It's working? Yeah, it's absolutely working. Look at that. See, there are my questions. Got my quiz navigation. Got 10 questions in there. But the first five are A, B, C, D. The second five are A, B, C, D, E. All right? And, of course, they've got uh, the... Um, uh, the... Um, the linking is in there. You know, you can actually turn that off by just going here to uh, filters and you can just turn it off just for this quiz. And actually, if you did that, switch the filter on, switch the glossary filter off um, before making the first quiz that you duplicated, that will also be passed on to all the duplicates thereafter. So you know, it's still not that hard to make. Although the duplication itself takes a bit of time to actually complete for some reason. Anyway, that is it. Okay, so to sum up, all of these activities, um, the glossaries and the uh, the glossary entries and everything are all, all available in the um, MoodleNet, MagNet thing, link below. Um, I will actually link to this category here. So this collection, which is the new general service list project uh, materials here. There's the different question banks and uh, glossary entries are actually in here, just like this. This one's the NGSL glossary entries, uh, NAWL glossary entries, um, etc., etc., are all in there. Uh, and there's the full activities course and things like that. So please feel free to uh, make good use of these and have your students um, access them. Uh, as always, I'll have all the links to these and the plugins that I used and the new general service list page itself. I'll have links to all of this in the description below, along with um, links to the different chapters and things like that, different parts of uh, today's video, because it's a long one. What is it? Wow, an hour and 14 minutes already. Wow. Okay. Um, so that's it. <laughs> I'm finally going to go and take a break. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've watched through to the end, uh, you must really love Moodle and or teaching English. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, please like and subscribe and, and do all that sort of great stuff as well because apparently that helps with algorithm and helps other people find this content. So if you like this kind of content, please give us a, a like and a subscribe on, on that as well. Um, love it. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.
Chiesa.